Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS. In today's video, we're going to talk about some different inspection methods using some of the latest digital measurement technologies. Specifically for this uh, demo, we're going to use the Creaform Handy Probe System, which is basically a portable CMM you can take out on the shop floor to inspect parts. Um, it's a handheld device that uses an optical tracking camera system to track it. And the other neat thing about this system is unlike arm-based systems or projected light systems, we don't have to worry about the harsh environment on the shop floor as far as movements, vibrations, things like that. They actually don't affect the, the uh, accuracy of this uh, technology. We can actually measure a part while it's moving around. Now we're not going to go into a ton of uh, detail on this product itself. Um, if you'd like to do, uh, see that, in the description below is a link to a detailed demo. But what we're going to cover is the different methods you can inspect with this technology out on the shop floor. Depending on your situation, different methods may apply. Now um, what we're going to actually inspect is this part you see here. This is a huge casting, it's about four feet across, it weighs at least a thousand pounds. It would be very difficult to take a part like that, take it into your CMM lab and inspect it. Um, just because of the size and the, and the, and the uh, weight of this, it's just not feasible. So that's where a system you know, like this is really handy that you can go out there and do that. So it's a big cast part, it's machined, it's got a lot of faces, a lot of holes, and different dimensions we're gonna wanna inspect. Now, the first method we're gonna use is a manual method. Now, when you think manual method, you might think, well, why not just take you know, a pair of calipers and some different uh, gauges and, and hand tools to inspect this part? Well, again, the part is very large. You know, they do make calipers and hand tools to measure large parts like that, but they're very expensive, and it's difficult to get all the different features on this part just because of the shape and where they're located. So we're going to use this system with no CAD file and we're going to do a manual inspection process. And we are going to go out and just take measurements. We're going to look at the blueprint and just take measurements almost like a set of hand tools. Um, but we're going to be able to do it much faster and mo much more accurately uh, in this method. So we'll do a completely manual method. The second way we're going to do it is a semi-automatic semi method. And what do I mean by that? We're going to use a CAD file, but we're not going to pre-program anything. We're going to go out on the shop floor, we're going to probably look at that drawing and, and take those measurements, but we will be using that CAD file as the nominal or reference geometry. But we're going to do all of the measurements on the fly, so to speak. And then the third method we're going to use is fully automatic. And we're going to be using Polyworks in this demo. It's a very powerful inspection. Uh, a software tool. We'll use that for the semi-automatic and for the fully automatic. And what Polyworks allows you to do is offline program the entire sequence that you want to do. All your measurements, callouts, GD&T, whatever you want to do, you program it offline by using that CAD model. And then the operator out on the shop floor just has to follow along. It will prompt them uh, you know, what things to pick and perform the measurements. So it's really nice because you can be doing that offline while perhaps you're CNC machining the part or doing other operations. By the time it's ready for inspection, you've already writ your, written your program. The operator just follows along and probes and, and does whatever the software tells them to and then instantly gives him a report. So those are the three common methods that are used out in the real world and we're going to go through all of those in this demonstration. So getting started with the manual method, the first step in the process is to look at the drawing. We want to look at what dimensions or GD&T or what information it is we want to measure. <clears throat> and as you can see, there's quite a bit going on on just this one drawing alone. A lot of measurements, a lot of patterns, etc. 
The other thing we need to look at is our datums. What is the datum alignment system that all of these measurements are based off of? And many times, uh, parts like this may have multiple datum setups uh, uh, for all the different dimensions. And there will be limits to what you can do with the manual method, but using this technology is still better than trying to use hand tools. It'll be faster and more accurate. So to establish the datums, we're gonna go out and probe some geometry. Now, datums can be planes, lines, points, axes, or a combination of, of those. And we're not gonna get into a lot of what datums are in GD and T in this video. There's plenty of videos out there that do that. But we're gonna go ahead and establish a datum system for this part. Now, in the manual method, we don't even really need to do this. But we're going to go ahead and do it just so that we have the part in an orientation and it just makes it easier to take measurements and look at what you've got going on on the screen. So for this part, we're going to do three datums, one along the top, we're going to probe all the information, one along the side, and then finally one on the front. Because we've got these big major faces and it makes sense to establish those as the datums. Now, during the demo, you're going to see with the handy probe different um, extensions, um, different tips, styli, different length extensions. And one of the neat things about the system is you can hot swap um, these different extensions. So when you need a little more reach, um, it's a Renishaw system. And once you calibrate that um, uh, extension and tip, um, you can just swap it back and forth. So you'll notice that during the demo, different extensions are on there and it literally just takes a second to swap it out and put a different one on. So once we get the three datums established, we'll go ahead in Polyworks and actually tell it what those datums are. So here in Polyworks, we'll take those three planes that we probed um, and create the datums from that. So because there's no CAD, you don't really see a whole lot at this point. You just have some planes that we uh, probed and then you just go into Polyworks and you define which plane is datum A, datum B, datum C. And again, it could be a plane, a line, a point. It could be uh, a plane, an axis, a point. I mean, w there's many different ways to create datums and in Polyworks, it supports every way you could think of to create them. But once we've established them, then as we go to different views, it'll look correct. So we've got the, uh, uh, the datums established. And now when we start taking our measurements, everything uh, will be in that datum system. So for the first dimension we want to take, we want to do an overall length dimension. And since we've already probed that plane on the right hand side and established that as one of our datums, now what we can do is just pick points on the uh, plane on the left side and it's going to measure each one of those points perpendicular or normal back to that plane. So the nice thing about that is I can pick anywhere on these planes and get the dimension instantly back to that plane. So I can sample a whole bunch of spots and not only am I getting the overall dimension, but if I'm seeing differences in those measurements, um, that's probably telling me something right away that those planes aren't parallel. But otherwise, those overall dimensions should be very close uh, to being the same if they are parallel. So now we're going to go ahead and measure the thickness of the part and we're going to do it uh, very similar to how we did the overall length. We've already established that datum plane on the back side. So now we just come around to the front and we can pick points like we did before. You'll notice we are using that longer extension we mentioned. We hot swap that and that just gives us a little more reach as we're trying to probe the uh, front face of this part, get a little more depth. And again, we just move around and wherever we want points could be, you know, a couple of points. It could be a hundred points, really doesn't matter as many points as you want to take. And again, we're measuring to that back plane um, with every point normal back to that back plane and getting a thickness of the part. So just like our length dimension, now we have some thickness dimensions. And again, we don't have any CAD here. We're just measuring back to that plane and getting a thickness on the part everywhere we pick the point. Next up, what we want to do is measure these two large circles in the middle of the part. Now, the first step before we can measure those circles is we want to define a plane. Um, that's going to give us a normal vector and then also a position or a plane basically to, to put those circles on. So what we do is we just go around and we just pick uh, at least three points on 
uh, the uh, surface here. Now we can pick more if we want. Um, the more points we pick, the more data we'll have when we fit that plane through it. And then once we've established that plane, now we can go ahead and pick some points uh, on the circle itself. So we can pick you know, as few as three or four or 10 or 12, basically whatever we want. Um, and then we'll tell it to go ahead and create a circle. Um, we'll go ahead and then do that for the other circle. And in fact, we can probe as many circles as we want um, in that same plane. So if we want that circle to be defined in that same plane and have that same normal vector as that plane, then we just continue to pick as many circles as we want. So you can see, we can quickly go through and pick a lot of circles uh, and define them on that plane. So now that we have probed that circle, we can certainly now measure the diameter of the circle and see what that is. But then we can also pull dimensions off of the datums or any other geometry we create. So we've already established those datum planes and now we can pull measurements uh, to the center point of the circle and uh, see what it is from datum A and datum B and get those dimensions as well. So it's very easy uh, to pull some center point dimensions, almost like a positional tolerance. Um, again, we don't have CAD uh, to know exactly where that hole is, but we do have dimensions pulled off of our drawing of how far away the center uh, of those circles should be from those two faces. Now we're going to go ahead and measure a bolt pattern or bolt circle. And you can see on this part there are lots of them. Now we're going to speed the video up on this just to make it go a little faster. Uh, but the first step is to probe the uh, primary uh, circle uh, or the center circle, I guess we can call it first. And again, you go around and establish that. You, you can pick you know, as few as three or four points or as, as many as you like. So we'll go around and pick all of those. And then secondly, we will then probe each uh, individual hole all the way around the pattern. And then basically we're just building all that geometry and we can then manually um, check that pattern or use some of the routines in Polyworks to check that pattern. So we're gonna look at the uh, diameter of all the holes, do all the holes fall uh, within that diameter, and then the, you know, the angle um, uh, of each uh, individual hole and see if they are in the correct pattern. So again, even though we don't have CAD, you know, within a few minutes, we can go around and measure all of these holes and see do they line up with the center hole are they all in the same um, uh, diameter and are they all at the right angles um, just by probing it and then running some routines in the polyworks software so we'll take one more measurement here and this one we're going to do concentricity so we're going to look at the two large holes here on the uh, end of this big casting and see how they look now since we've already probed that back plane and created that as a datum, we only need to now probe the front plane and we could probe it just right around the circle or we could probe in a few different spots because theoretically um, these three planes should all be in the same plane. So it's really up to us how we want to establish that plane. But in this case, we'll go ahead and uh, pull points on all three of those faces because they all should be in the same plane. So that'll establish the other plane. And then we're just gonna go in and measure the two circles similar to what we did before. And again, we always need a reference plane for that circle. So for the back one, we established that on one of our datums. And then we've just established a new plane for the front circle. Um, and then by getting those circles, we can look at their diameter and then we can look at their center point and see if, you know, if they line up. Now, we're not gonna show uh, all of the GD&T or all of the measurements you could do because obviously there's dozens on this part, but you get the general idea. Um, whether it's cylindricity, whether we wanna look at flatness, perpendicularity, parallelism, angularity, you can do just about everything just like you would with a print. And again, the only difference here is we're not using uh, calipers or other uh, you know, gauge pins or other measurement devices. We're using this probing system. 
So we can quickly move around this part and measure just about anything we want, referencing the drawing, setting up the datums, and getting very, very accurate measurements on this part. So even though the CAD doesn't exist, we can still get a lot of good information by using this manual method. All right, so now we're ready to take a look at the semi-automated method. And right away, you notice the big difference is we have the 3D CAD model. So that's going to allow us to do a lot of uh, new and different things and get more information than with the manual method. With the manual method, you pretty much take the measurements, you compare them to your print, uh, and that's about it. Now that we have the CAD, um, we're going to get some instant feedback. We're going to be able to work better with tolerances, and we're going to get more information. So we're going to set up the coordinate system or the uh, datum uh, system first, just like we did before. But even when we do that, for example, if we're going to probe a plane or a circle or a cylinder or something, we're going to get uh, information about how good that datum is. So, for example, if we uh, probe 10 points and define a plane, um, we'll see some statistical information right away how good that datum looks. Um, if we see a lot of the points are all over the place or a something that's supposed to be a cylinder is not really a cylinder, right away we may notice some problems. But we'll go through and we basically go into Polyworks, we just pick the geometry and then we define it. We can define it as a, a, a plane and datum A and a cylinder as datum B and a point as datum C or whatever it is. And then we'll go out and actually probe it. So it's a two-step process. We uh, select the CAD. We tell it what we want to do. For example, if we were going to do a, a overall dimension or positional tolerance, we can then put in the tolerance as well. And then when we do the measurements, it's going to measure everything to the datums, but it's looking at the underlying CAD geometry to look at you know the differences or the error. So this is the way we'll set up the datum system just like last time and then we'll do some of the same measurements as we did before. Now we're ready to take our first measurement. We're going to take the overall distance like we did in the manual method. The biggest difference will be now we will be referencing the nominal CAD data. So we'll use that same datum setup uh, that we just established uh, within the CAD and now when we take these measurements they're going to look at the CAD data underneath and compare the actual dimension to that. Um, and we'll also have a tolerance in there. So we'll be able to see right away how that compares to the CAD model as opposed to just taking a measurement and then looking at the print and looking at what it's supposed to be and what it really is. Um, this will also allow us to have more detailed reporting at the end of all of the data. So again, now we're measuring to the actual CAD file, looking at the difference uh, uh, as it's set up in that datum system. So we can go and take a whole bunch of points. So we can basically sample a bunch of different locations on this uh, face and look at all of those dimensions and see how they compare. So it's, it's similar but different in the sense we're going to have more information back to the CAD. We're going to see right away based on whatever our tolerance is, is you know, if we're in or out of tolerance. Our next uh, measurement will be that thickness measurement. And we'll just kind of briefly show this because it's pretty much the same setup. Uh, we're going to reference back to the datum on the back side. We're going to pick points uh, on the front and, again, get those uh, measurements with whatever tolerance we have, uh, measuring it to the nominal CAD in reference to that datum. Next up is the two holes in the center of the part. Uh, we'll go ahead and probe those. And another nice thing when you're um, working with the CAD data is you start to get instant feedback. So as he probes um, uh, more and more points on that hole, he'll get more and more information, basically live feedback um, as he's going, so he might see some points that are, you know, way out of tolerance right away, um, or you know, he may be getting, uh, you know, points that are really good. But you'll start to see some trends right away, even before we start generating our report. Um, we kind of get some in instant information on the fly as we go. 
Now on to the uh, bolt pattern. Um, same thing again. We just tell it in CAD what we're going to measure, and then we go out and measure it. Uh, we'll establish the uh, center circle first, and then we'll probe all of the holes in the pattern. And again, we will be getting feedback as we probe each hole. So on the fly, you can kind of see what's going on. You can see what the, the measurements and the deviation looks like from the nominal data as you're going along. And of course, later, this will all be put in an inspection report that all can be documented, uh, can be analyzed, uh, could be sent downstream to you know other software and applications that can take advantage of it. So that's one of the really nice things about the semi-automatic and the automatic method is all of this data is recorded. It can be output in spreadsheets and other information that you have it. It can be assembled in reports with pictures. So instead of just taking manual measurements and then looking at a print and see how they compare or writing in them you know, or manually entering them into a spreadsheet, everything we measure here in this method is automatically kept uh, in, in the software and then can be output in a whole variety of different reports. And again, we've just sped this up a little bit just for, for time purposes. Uh, it's kind of tedious doing the same holes over and over. All right, our last operation here will be that concentricity between those two holes on the end. And again, same process. We go in the software, we tell it what we're going to measure, we go out and measure it, and then we get the results. Um, so it's, uh, again, comparing the measured results to the CAD model um, as it pertains to the datum system it's in. Now, it's not uncommon on parts to have multiple datum systems, especially a part like this. You got a lot of faces on all the different sides, um, and you may have different uh, datum alignments. Um, and the Polyworks software will support uh, as many datum alignments as you want. Uh, sometimes, depending on the part, there is no datum alignment, or it's a partial datum alignment, or a best fit. And there's lots of ways to make these, but it doesn't matter. Um, we can we can set up any or all of them. Again, take our measurements. We get those instant results, and those will be in our report. Um, but this is generally the process with the kind of semi-automatic automated mode, where we are not pre-programming anything ahead of time. Um, we're just loading the CAD and kind of step by step telling it what we want to measure. So if you want to do eight, ten, fifteen measurements, this is a great way to do it. Um, as I said earlier, it could be your first article. You just want to check a few things, some key uh, features on the part. Just, you know, it's just as easy to do it this way. Um, and you get the idea. Uh, and then next, we're going to show after this the fully automated method. So finally, we're going to do the fully automatic method. And this is programmed offline. So the operator who is actually running this inspection routine doesn't even have to really know uh, how to do it, uh, how to create it in the software. It could be a totally different operator. But again, you just take the CAD model, you define everything in it offline, uh, starting with the datum uh, system and then all the measurements you want to take. Um, and you can even retell uh, the. Uh, you can even require the operator uh, for a circle or a plane how many points you want them to pick. And then the system just goes through and prompts the operator to go take those measurements. So again, they don't have to know much about uh, GD and T. I mean, basic measurement understanding is certainly a good thing, but they're literally prompted to walk through and just do what it tells them to do on the screen. And so you can completely control what they do throughout the whole process. And again, all this information is saved uh, into the software and reports can be generated. When we're finished here, we'll actually take a look at one of those reports so you can get an idea of what that looks like. But again, they just go through and uh, do all the measurements that they're asked to do. And the great thing about this is we don't even have to have the physical part. As I mentioned earlier, the part could still be uh, in the CNC machine being cast. Um, we have the 3D CAD. We can build our inspection and our entire inspection routine with multiple datum setups. You know, you could have hundreds of measurements. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And general rule of thumb is it takes about uh, in the software about a minute or so 
to basically program in um, each measurement. So a good way to think about it is if you had 60 uh, call outs uh, that you had to, to take of all the different you know measurements and GD and T information, it's about a minute a call out. So 60 call outs would take you about an hour to create that inspection report. Um, and again, it's being done all offline. And then it's sent down to the operator and it may take them, you know, depending on the measurements you're doing, it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it could be three minutes. You know, the more uh, bolt patterns you have or, you know, uh, types of measurements that require, you know, a lot of points, let's say cylinders and and other things, it'll just take, you know, the operator longer to, to gather that information. But that's essentially the whole process. We've sped this up again for time purposes, but, you know, it'll take someone about eight minutes or so to gather all of these uh, points. Uh, but then when they're done, it automatically creates the report. Now, another thing is if, let's say, we had three of these here, three of these large castings sitting next to each other, we can do one right after the other, and it, the software will automatically save them into separate reports. So if it's the same part and you're doing the same measurements, you only have to create the inspection routine one time, and then you can measure as many parts as you want. You just say new part, it resets everything, you go do all the measurements again, and it stores it in a different report. So if you've got more than one part, you're only writing the program one time. So that's great um, when you're trying to do multiple parts. So that's it on the semi or the fully automatic method. Um, you can see you got to do a little planning offline, but once that's done, the operator doesn't need to know much about the software. They just need to follow along and take all the measurements. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that inspection report. Now, here's one of the drawings, the original drawings um, that we'll reference, even though we're working with the CAD, you still usually have some dimension or control drawings. This is what we used to reference and create uh, that offline report, or even doing it on the fly and even doing it manually. You're still relying on some kind of control drawing somewhere that tells you all the different things you wanna measure. Now, there is a thing called PMI now that's becoming more popular where all of this information can be entered into the 3D CAD file, and that can actually be imported right into uh, Polyworks, and it's basically all created for you. But as I mentioned earlier, we still have to, for the most part these days, en enter in all the measurements we want to take manually. And again, that's about a minute uh, you know, per call out, and you can see there's you know 100 plus on this. But there's the basic drawing. And then here's just a few pages from our report. Now, these reports can be um, set up in templates any way you want to display the information. We're not going to go into a lot of detail. But basically, you can see we've got some dimensions here. Uh, we've got some different, you know, whether they pass or fail, what the tolerance is, the nominal uh, value, et cetera. So we'll just walk through, uh, through the, a few of these pages just so you can see it. Uh, it talks about the datum alignments that it's referencing and so forth. So you can see a lot of different uh, dimensions on here. Uh, you can see some pass, some fail. Uh, you can, there's some neat color coding things you can do. This is basically, we kind of call it a heat map or a whisker plot. Um, and we can look at different things and you can see the colors are basically a, a tolerance or deviation amount. So that's pretty handy sometimes to be able to see via color and then also the height of the whiskers, uh, how far things are out, depending on what the measurement is you're taking. Um, there's one of our bolt patterns that you can see there. And again, some more dimensions. We've got GD and T flatness, parallelism, perpendicularity, uh, position, you know, whatever it is, you've got all of these call outs. And this is for the whole uh, drawing. Obviously, for the demo, we only did a handful of dimensions, but this would be everything. So that's basically what a report looks like. You can, again, format this any way you want, put whatever pictures you want in it, generate this report. All of this data can be put into like a PDF file or it can all be in like an Excel spreadsheet for, you know, SPC and other software that you want to look at trends over times and things like that. So we thought we would do one last thing, and that is 3D scan this part. Now, one of the advantages of the Handy Probe system is it also offers an optional 3D scanner called the Metroscan. And this is a blue uh, laser-based 3D scanner 
that has 22 laser lines. They're crosshair or crosshatch laser lines like you see here. And this does 3D scanning. So this is fully non-contact uh, 3D scanning of the part. And depending on what you're doing, uh, scanning is the way to go. And for other things, probing is the way to go. Now, we actually have a whole video that we'll link in the description below that talks about you know, the advantages of probing versus scanning when you want to use each one. And sometimes you can actually use both. Um, this part is mostly planes and holes. Uh, you know, primitive type features that we want to inspect. We're not so worried about kind of the rough cast areas. We're mostly we're worried about the machined areas. So scanning may not be uh, really required here, but but it certainly could be done. Um, it gets to be a challenge when you start to get into small deep holes. The lasers just can't resolve uh, some of those features when you get into those fine features. And that's where probing is better. But if you want to learn more, definitely check out that video. It goes into a lot of detail. We just thought we would show uh, the scanning here just so you can kind of see what it's like. Um, but this is just going around scanning the part. Again, for time, we've sped it up a little bit. Um, but you could 3D scan the whole part. And then we'll show a uh, deviation map. What's neat about that um, is that kind of I talked about those colored whisker plots. Well, you can do a deviation of the whole part. Um, just to look at it uh, for again for this part it's not really uh, going to tell you a whole, a whole lot but it is uh, nice to be able to see it but it's more of just kind of a visual uh, kind of trend uh, you know what's trending on the part to get accurate measurements you're still going to need to go in and do your you know dimensional uh, measurements and GD and T and things like that but you know if you've got a part that's very organic and you want to do a quick check that that deviation map is, is kind of neat. Okay, so this wraps up the video on showing some of the different inspection methods you can do with a system like the Creoform Handy Probe system along with the uh, Polyworks inspection software. And you know, depending on the situation, you may use all of these different methods. Uh, for example, you've got some legacy parts where you have no CAD at all and you want to take some, some measurements and you know, see how your part, it just got machined, you want to see uh, you know what what those dimensions look like you can use it in a completely man, uh, manual method and then secondly for like the semi-automatic that's great where maybe you've machined the part and you want to do a quick first article uh, you don't have time to go offline and write the whole program you want to check you know 10 15 different dimensions and just see how the part looks that's where the semi automatic method works great the nominal data is the CAD data so you are measuring it back to the CAD but you want to do something quick and then finally, the fully automatic method, that's great when you really want to do that detailed inspection. You want to measure everything on that part, and you have the beauty of going and doing that offline. Um, the part could still be on the CNC machine. You can be offline programming that, have that all ready to go. Once that part's done, the operator grabs the handy probe, goes out, takes all the dimensions, um, just following along with the Polyworks software. So those are the three different methods. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this, um, we can do either a virtual uh, meeting or even a demonstration on this, or we can do it on site. And if you look below in the description, there's a link to a, a quick form that you can fill out. We can contact you and discuss you know, what your needs are and see if we can help you out with this. But that wraps up the demo on the different inspection methods, and in this case, using the Creaform Handy Probe and Polyworks software system.